Welcome to Things You Don't Know, the podcast that shares little-known facts about well-known individuals and events and little-known people and the impact that they have had on things today and sometimes is just fun. We always do seek to be entertaining. In this particular episode where we're looking at women who have overcome different uh, kinds of uh, obstacles, we're not just going to talk about some of these women and their accomplishments and how they have overcome. You get to actually hear them say how they did it. This is good stuff. Sean, introduce our guest. Thank you, Dr. Weaver. Our guest, my friends, is Karen Lynn. Karen has enjoyed success in several fields, adaptive aerobics, dancing, and inclusion advocacy. Her early life didn't start with such promise. During infancy, she had a reaction from her DPT immunization. And after her second shot, she had such a bad reaction, she was taken to the hospital where she fell into a coma, and her family was told she only had a 30% chance to survive. She was told she was paralyzed on her left side, and if she lived, would be deaf, dumb, and blind. But against all odds, she survived and thrived. This is the first in a number of achievements, one with great effort. By the way, and none of those things is true. She is neither deaf, nor dumb, nor paralyzed. Go ahead, John. Absolutely. It is with great pleasure I want to introduce you to a lady I greatly admire, my dear friend, Miss Karen Lett. Karen, I know you built your strength in your legs and in your arm through using dancing. What made you choose that method? Well, originally my mother chose it, and I just followed my mother's suggestion. And I learned not just to love dance, but I love music and I love theater um, because the house was always filled with music and joy from that kind of music. When I went to my first session with Al Gilbert, it was magic and it was a dream come true. I think it gave you a sense of belonging as well as the physical exercise and the movement helped your muscles get stronger, which improved your muscle memory. Of course, it, it all did. The dance, the eye, hand, eye, ear, motor coordination training from the music alone did wonders for me. And I was an instrument to, to doing whatever I had to do to become more physically able to do it all. I know later on, to move on a little bit, you had to engage the legal system and file a lawsuit to expand your options in education as a person with a disability. How did it get to the point where you had to take legal action? It got to the point because I was being minimalized and discriminated against, and my counselor would not listen to me or the truth. Karen, when you, when you say that you were minimalized and um, pushed I understand that uh, one of the things that happened to you was that they suggested you needed to be in a sheltered workshop. Is that correct? That was the first time, yes. Holy moly. What was that like? It was awful, but I took that experience and every experience in my life, and I turned it into a positive. I did what, what they wanted me to do. What, is, what was that that they wanted you to do? <laughs> Fold boxes with one hand. Good heavens, I can't think of anything that you should be asked less to do, frankly. Yes, and I smiled, and I did it, and I did, I did everything they asked and suggested of me. But I, like I said, I turned it into a positive. And when the six-month training uh, period was over, it was done. And I was not going back there. And I knew inside myself that I did not belong in a workshop. And I didn't belong doing that for the rest of my life. 
even though uh, Dr. Deneen did recount some of her accomplishments in the beginning, this is a lady who has written a prize-winning book, who has engaged in all manner of things. Can you imagine the waste of having her put together boxes? Get the impact here. I have two hands, five fingers. Thankfully, after a great deal of effort, including contacting a number of politicians, you filed and won this lawsuit, the first suit won under the Rehab Act in California, and you were able to get an English degree at Santa Monica College. Yes, that was the second time. and uh, Not bad for a retarded person. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. And folks, I say retarded, not with to disparage her, but it was a label that she was given. That was the label. And I was labeled like that on three separate occasions. So the, secret, the second time I went into the office and I told, told my counselor that I wanted to go on with my education and I wanted to teach dance and I wanted to be in the field of recreation. And she told me to my face, how could a person with one hand teach other people how to dance. Once again, instead of making conflict, I stood there, I took it internally and turned this whole thing around to try to benefit myself. And so I reached out and I wrote letter after letter to President Jimmy Carter the people in his cabinet, and I got no answer at all. And then I talked with some person, and they guided me to the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare at that time. And I talked with another person, and we started the first lawsuit. What was the basis of that uh, first lawsuit? What was it about? Just very briefly. It, briefly, it was, it was about getting the right to go on with my education. I was told that I couldn't take any classes unless I took 12 units a semester, and I knew that that was false. And so with everything in my being, I mustered the courage to just move forward and listen to my heart. So you were told that you had to take 12 credits uh, a semester? minimum okay and i mean i've taught at uh, a lot of universities and uh, and sean uh, dr neen currently teaches at uh, kane university and i think we can both verify that that has never been something that uh, is true absolutely not i've had students taking three credits a semester and students taking 30 it's an individual choice well if i wasn't in tune enough and aware enough and an aware person, the wool could have been pulled over my head and I would have never moved forward. Well, you made a conscientious decision to assert yourself, speak up, and, and not give up no matter what the cost. What's that saying you have? Tell me I can't do something. I will show you I can. I'm giggling over here because with each, I, I did that. She was telling me that I could never, I could never gain and a achieve my goal. And I told myself inside, you just wait, I'll show you, I'll do this. And I learned that it wasn't so much about doing it for them. It was about doing it for myself and achieving my goal and my, my desires and my destination in life. Nobody, nobody was going to tell me I couldn't do what I wanted to do. You've done that in so many areas. You've laid the foundation for my success and many other people. I want the world to know that. When you say your success, Dr. Dean, what do you have specific reference to? Well, I believe that it's people like Karen who laid the foundation for people with exceptionalities to chart their own path. You know my uh, long struggle to obtain a doctorate 
And all throughout this process, I kept looking back at what Karen had done and what others in my community had done. And it, it served as mental fuel as, as well as encouragement. Karen, um, you know, you've been an inspiration to many people and I'm sure you haven't gotten word back from them, but sometimes this happens without people getting back to you. And I want to encourage our listeners, first of all, if you want to contact Karen and let her know that she's been an inspiration, I'm going to have her give you her, she has a a, a website and I I want her to give that information to you now. Okay. It is whispersofhope.org. That's whispersofhope.org. And you can reach out to me at any time. I have a blog. I have all the information of all the things that I've been through. And I've turned each and every one of them into something that has made me a strong, vibrant person in this community. And it has made me thrive to help other people. Not bad for a person who was uh, consigned to being in a sheltered workshop. Um, Yeah, or retarded. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, I did want to just focus for a minute. Dance, you used that. Yes. Uh, And, you know, despite the fact that they said, well, you can't dance, you're paralyzed on your left side. Well, that's just crap. It is. You're not paralyzed on your left side. You dance. And you may not be able to use your left hand as with as great a facility as you can your uh, right hand, but it's not paralyzed either. It's a helping hand. That's exactly correct. So what is the message that we need to be giving to people with, I like to call it varying exceptionalities. Yes. Uh, what, what, What message can we give? I would say that you have to believe in yourself. You have to learn to love yourself. And you have to learn to listen to your voice, your inner voice, and go with that voice. I did that, and I listened. Sometimes I took two steps forward and then four steps back. But with each step forward and back, I built my character, and I became who I am. You're a character, that's for sure. Uh, Well, Karen... You know, you've been an inspiration to a lot of people, and we appreciate you sharing your your website and giving them the information for your blog. But what is the message that we need to give to uh, people with similar issues? The message is that you can do anything that you put your mind towards doing, that you can accomplish whatever your heart wants to accomplish. There's no, there's no time limit. There's, there's just you and what you want to do. And there's hope. If you have hope and faith in yourself and you can, can keep walking forward, then you can do anything. Okay. I, I hear you. But I wonder if people listening are really going to get this picture. And I want to just sort of re- reiterate a few things. First, you uh, were in a coma told that you had a 30% chance to live and you overcame that. Yes. Then you were told that you were paralyzed. Then you were told that you were retarded. Then you also had to deal with another issue in today's world. If you're different in any way, whether it's you're because you're black or because Islamic or because you are uh, Mexican or you're Jewish People will go after you, or for God's sake, if you're Asian, uh, you know, we see this every day in the news. I, I like to, to think of, of, of people like you as, okay, you got three strikes, but by God, you weren't out. There was, there was just something inside of me that would not give up and would not give in. And when, when push came to shove and things got bad enough, I was not going to give up. The tools that I used to help me get through those moments were music and songs that really gave me hope. 
It was my dance. It was my mother who was a progressive thinker. And, you know, she, she didn't treat me as a quote unquote person with a disability or in my day and age, it was called handicapped. Okay. And she, when she gave me the lessons, I walked into the dance studio with a full leg metal leg brace on my leg. When I was 11 years old, because of the dance and because of Al Gilbert, this wonderful man who just gave me his heart and soul, he made dance lessons like therapy. He even gave me piano lessons. And I tried with all my heart and might. But when I gave the signal to my fingers, my fingers just curled up even more. He gave, he went out of his way to give me a dance bar, ballet bar that I put up in my, my backyard. He gave me a little book, which inspired me about the little ballerina who had her legs were disabled and she became a, a prima ballerina as a little girl. Um, and, you know, things like this in my life inspired and encouraged me and my mother when the children at school were making fun of me and ridiculing me because of my learning disability I just learned to turn the cheek in such a way that made me move forward so one of the other things that you just brought up here very quickly is that uh, you you allude to your uh, learning disability, you're yeah. dyslexic. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, there's a lot of people, by the way, that are dyslexic, but I know that they receive a lot of uh, backlash. Um, we're kind of running short on time, so I'm going to sort of push this along. I, I wish we could spend another couple of hours talking about uh, s- some of those um, prejudicial things. Did you feel that the prejudice played a large role in holding you back or attempting to hold you back? No. It may have hurt for the first day, two or three, but the way my mother would comfort me and the way I learned to comfort myself, I was able to move through those prejudice in a very positive way. Okay, so you did experience the prejudice. All right. And the prejudice would be because of the learning disability, the physical impairments, uh, and being a woman, okay, that had something to do with it, and being Jewish. Let's just be real. And, um, you know, to all all the people out there that could hear this, that are going to hear this and, and think, he's talking about me. You say to them, you can just reach out and get the help and whatever you it takes to push through it. Okay, well, you know, I hope you, that you have enjoyed being on uh, Things You Don't Know. I guarantee you that Dr. Deneen and myself, we're thrilled to have you. Absolutely. And your story is an example, not just for uh, people with uh, varying exceptionalities, disabilities, whatever you want to call them, but for normal, able-bodied people. It's, it's very important that you never give up. And your uh, determination and tenacity are truly an inspiration. I hope that everyone takes something away from this. And Sean? It's been a real joy having you here. I mean, I I know it will really benefit our listeners to hear your story. And I'm flattered to know you. I'm a better person because of your example. And may, I think, as Dr. Weaver said, everyone can learn from these insights. And may I just Say, may Pegasus keep flying always. Well, it's been my pleasure to be able to do this for you, for both of you. Uh, you're, you're very sweet. Thanks for listening, and we hope that you've enjoyed this inspiring story of a female overcomer. And we certainly do appreciate your likes, your suggestions, and your comments, and your subscriptions, too. And hope that you will join us for the next in the series of Female Overcomers. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Bye.